Hello everybody, it's the Fat Philosopher here today and I'm bringing you a video to show you the inside of a typical Japanese guitar store. Some people have been asking me what it's like to live in Japan and since we all like guitars I thought I'd go show you kind of what's what my local guitar stores are like. So first of all, where do I live exactly here? So I live in Fukuyama, which is in the prefecture of Hiroshima. Fukuyama is a city of about 450,000, the 44th biggest city in Japan, and it's halfway between Okayama City and Hiroshima City. So it's not a very big place, but it's not very small either. And in my hometown there are actually three different guitar stores. The first one is just a small little mom and pop one, and with only about maybe 20 guitars and maybe 10 basses in it. It's actually where I managed to find uh, my Fender Mustang used there. That's where I bought my guitar. The second place that sells guitars is actually a pawn shop, which is unfortunately named Hard Off. It, they sell electronics and guitars, and although they sell mostly used guitars, they do sell uh, new Epiphones and new PRSs for some reason. So it's not entirely used gear there. The one boat I'm going to introduce today is called Suganami, which is in downtown Fukuyama, very near the station, and it is the biggest guitar store in the area. Suganami has about, I'd say about 160, 170 guitars, about 50 basses, and another 150 so acoustic guitars. Suganami actually has two buildings, one is just for pianos, and this one here that we're looking at, this is for guitars and drums, although it's mostly guitars. First of all, before I go a little further, just to tell you about the prices on here in Japan. So Japan doesn't use like dollars and cents, not two money systems. They only have yen. So for example, one dollar would be, so one yen would be like one cent in America. So a hundred yen would be like one dollar. Now of course the exchange rate fluctuates. So actually right now, the time of recording, uh, one American dollar is 107 yen. However, if you look at these prices here, it actually says in Japanese that they, are, they don't include the sales tax, which is 10%. So when you think about that, it actually, uh, if you include the sales tax, this price here, if you just take off the two zeros, that would be the price in dollars in America. So this... Uh, 77 guitar, kind of a strange brand that we get, you'll see a lot of them in this video, a lot of strange brands. They're selling this guitar for about a, uh, $1,488 America. That's almost what it would be if you were to convert right over. It's just whenever you see a price, just take off the last two zeros and that'll be your price in American dollars. All right, so let's get on to the tour. So first of all, i um, start with the amps here. As you can see, Boss Katanas are everywhere and behind a Black Star little uh, banner anyways. They have Black Star Bosses. They also sell these um, Yamahas, uh, THRs, which are very popular. There's also some, these are the bass amps going on. This is Phil Jones. They also have a Fender in the corner there. There's some Fenders around too. And they're not a very a lot of amps there, but a, about maybe a dozen or so of various makes and models. So here are the pedals. As you can see, as your usual pedals you get in America or would be available in Japan. Of course, a couple of a little extra ones. Here you see they have a here you can see they have a um, signature series by Takoshi Omura, which I believe is the baby metal guitarist. And right next to it is a diesel pedal, which I really want, but I'm not going to pay 430 bucks for it. So I have to do, make do with what I got. But you can see this, just as we have signature models in America, they have signature models in Japan of their popular artists as well. Okay, going on, this is the cheapo area. All these guitars are by a brand called either Legend or Blitz which is your super cheapo type of beginner guitars parents buy for their 10 year old kid for the first time type of deal here. And uh, so it's kind of like your glary, very bottom end, going for about $100 up to about $200 or so. This is a little more expensive one, it's called Blitz and it's just selling for about $318 with a setup. 
So these guitars are, don't include setup with them. As you see, without a setup, it's $246. But if you want a com complete pack with an amp and a tuner and a gig case, including a setup, it's $318. Setup prices are not too expensive in Japan. Last time I took my guitar for a setup, they only charged me five bucks. Um, generally for repairs, like let's say you want to get a pickup in or change pickups, they charge about $30, $30 roughly. So it's not that expensive. $30 per pickup. I guess it depends what you need done, think, of course. But it's fairly reasonable, I think, repairs. Okay, here we have some same pig noses. Of course, you've seen pig noses before. It has a speaker right in the center there, so you don't need an amp. And here's a little bit. This grassroots is an ESP guitar. It's three-quarter size and kind of a sparkling pink, kind of a girl guitar. And they're selling that for about just under $500 if you want a kind of smallish guitar. Okay, so here you see this is a Fender Mustang. And you see the little tag that says, Made in Japan. So they're really pushing the part the fact that it's made in Japan. Curious thing, Japanese do like American-made guitars, but the idea that American-made guitar is better than a Japanese guitar doesn't really exist. Even Fender in Japan, they really promote Fender made in Japan, made in Japan. So you see a lot of made in Japan. They consider the quality of Japanese guitars to be uh, just as good, if not better, than American-made. Well, of course, just as, I guess that's the way it is. You think your own country does a good job, right? And on the floor here we have some uh, uh, Fuji Gens. If you don't know Fuji Gen, it's a fairly old company. And as you can see, they said made in Japan. Fuji Gens actually made guitars for almost every maker there is. I think they started off making Ibanez guitars. Then for about 20 years they made Fenders and for at the same time I think for about 8 years they made Epiphones. So, and I think they still make quite a few for other companies even right now. So they have, their company is in Nagano. So Nagano, the Mount Fuji is in Nagano Prefecture. So that's why they call it the company Fuji Gen. Gen means strings. So Mount Fuji strings. And in addition to their um, making for other builders, they also, being an OEM for other builders, they also make their own uh, guitars. Behind the guitars there's actually two Fender amps, and there's a bass breaker there, and maybe a twin reverb. Behind there are a little more expensive amps. So if you're interested in Fuji again, let's go take, take a look online. I'm sure they have a catalog available there. Okay, going down, you can see on the floor here, we have the cheaper Epiphones here on the floor. Okay, you can see you have a, a SG there and uh, some Les Pauls ranging for about from about $185 up to about just under $500 there. There's an SG Special as you can see going for a good price. Now here on the top walls are more expensive guitars. These are kind of boutique guitars. This is made by somebody called Ken Nui, which is just some kind of private builder. Now these guitars have been sitting on the wall for ages. They've been air and there. You see one reason why is because they're two thousand, almost $2,500 to buy one of these things. There's a lot of these little boutique Japanese brands with these names you never heard of selling their guitars for outrageous prices. So these guitars, have the these, you know, just looks like a regular Fender Strat. For me, I don't know why it needs to be so expensive, but uh, it's been sitting on that wall for ages. I don't know if he's ever sold one. And as you can see, there's some, also some cheaper brands that you might not have heard of, Momos. Here we have Edwards. Edwards is kind of a middle tier um, brand for um, ESP. ESP has lots of companies, like there's six or, se six or seven little companies within ESP. And uh, Edwards is a Japanese only brand. As you can see, it's kind of middle to it's kind of like an LTD type price point here. As you can see, it's about a little bit over $1,000 for this guitar here, $1,050. Here are a couple more Edwards. You see, kind of Les Paul style. Again, just under $1,000 for these two. Same as your kind of LTD type of thing there. Now here is a company called Grassroots. This is actually the lowest rank um, 
of the ESP models. The grassroots is like um, ESP's answer to Epiphone. And uh, grassroots go fairly cheap. You can get ones for like uh, $150 or so. This one here is just under $500, and that's because it's a seven string. And actually, it feels quite nice. I wouldn't mind getting that if it was lefty, but it's not lefty, so. And like I said, this is a Japanese only brand, so you don't see this really cheaper brand being sold in overseas. But it's kind of like the Squire, the Epiphone of the ESP line. Here's another grassroots. It's kind of an LP style going for another, again, just under $600 there. And of course we have a, a Fender's Squire. So this is the cheapest Squire. We have a Bullet for just under $200. And then we have Affinities going for about $250 there. Both Fender and Gibson are quite a well representative in Japan with their own brands as well. Here of course we have Fender uh, a lefty. This is the only lefty in the store. Squire Affinity for about $250. So if you're left-handed, either buy this or get out, basically. <laughs> of course, you can order. In my town of Fukuyama, right now, there's only two lefty guitars for sale. One is in that hard off. It's a used uh, uh, Tokai LP style, and then there's this one. The mom pop shop, which I bought my own little uh, Mustang from, actually doesn't have any lefties in stock at the moment. They did have a Yamaha Pacifica lefty, but now they don't have that. Maybe they sold it or they got rid of it for somehow. So, lefties is pretty well mail order for me. Here's another uh, brand you see a lot in Japan, Area Pros. Quite budget friendly, $300, $400 there. Kind of a metal type look to them. Uh, I don't like the nuts too much. The nuts are really thick on them for, for my taste. Of course, we have a couple of V's and there's a Mockingbird type there. We have a Jackson that's on sale for just over $500, a DBZ, not that I'm familiar with, I think it's part of Dean actually. And there's a Fernandez, Fernandez is another Japanese guitar company that's uh, not well known outside. When they're selling that, this Mockingbird type for $3,000, like I said, it's higher up on the wall, a little more expensive it gets, right? Here we have a Schecter on the wall, and it's actually there's a Schecter right behind it as well going for about just $450, $428, right? A lot of people don't realize this, but Schecter is owned by ESP. Um, the, the guy who founded uh, ESP uh, back in the 70s, later on he also went and bought uh, Schecter, I think in 1988. And as far as America is concerned, they're run as separate companies. So they really have no communication between the two otherwise, other than being owned by the same guy. However, a lot of their policies like return policies and store policies are identical. So in Japan, we're much more aware that uh, Schecter is part of ESP, but that type of knowledge is not really well known outside of Japan. And in music stores, wherever you see an ESP being sold, there'd definitely be Schecter sold as well. At this point, it might also maybe mention why you don't see many Ibanezes in this shop. Actually, none at all here. And that's because I talked to the shop owner and ESP has a much better return policy than Ibanez does. Maybe Ibanez, they have to buy the product outright, but ESP allows them to return after some time. So that gives a big incentive for shops to, to show a lot more ESP and also Schecter because it's the same company because of that. Of course, there are shops around that do have Ibanez's up, but generally speaking, you'll see a lot more ESP in Japan than you will um, and Schecter than you would Ibanez. Here you can see there's PRS. There's quite a few PRS's being f for sale. Right before it, it's called Bacchus. Bacchus Lotelli style from a company called Bacchus. Bacchus is a budget price guitar company from Japan. There's quite a few of them around too. And I think they have an online site you can order from. But it's another kind of company that's known in Japan, but not known outside of Japan. And the next one's ADZ there. I'm not sure, it's probably another Japanese company, not very famous, overcharging for their guitar. $2,600 for that in the back. OK, 
Okay, Bernie, Bernie guitars, of course, known for the LP styles. I think they're part of the lawsuit era back in the day. A very old Japanese company that still is making guitars these days. As you can see, the LP style is going for about $440 or so. And here you go, you can see the hollow bodies on the wall. Okay. And some of the Gibson traditionals on the floor is going for not pretty decent prices and Epiphones. In the back there are two cases, which I'm sorry I didn't get a better picture of those, but those, in those two cases are two uh, high-end Gibsons, uh, custom shops going for about 6000 one of them, one's going for about $8,000 each. So they being the high-end, they get to be their own special little case there. Here I mentioned here's the Gibsons uh, traditionals coming up here. There's a Les Paul and there's a, a tribute, sorry not traditional, but tributes. There's a SG there, eh? Here we go, this is a Japanese Strandbergs. First it says not to touch. It has two Strandbergs in this shop. And I think the Japanese ones are called Bordens. Bordens. So Strandberg Bordens was made in Japan guitar. And there's two in this shop, but unfortunately we can't touch them unless you get permission. On the top wall here we have all our Gibsons. On the, mostly on the right side, all the higher end Gibsons running from $1,600 to a couple thousand. Uh, the second from the left there is a Navigator, which is going for $4,320. This is again another ESP brand. Uh, Navigator um, is another higher end ESP brand only available in Japan. And the price reflects that there. As you see, here's an Epiphone hollow body on sale for $468. Behind it, there's a, a Gibson a signature. It's a Tomio Okada 1959 style signature. It's got a little American flag on it, but it's actually a Japanese signature Gibson guitar. And there's a Gretsch a hollow body going for $2,700. An Epiphone Holly body going for about $850. Now here we go, another thing I can just cannot understand. Here you, you look at a telly, it's by this no-name boutique brand called Rock and Roll Guitars. Rock and Roll Guitars, and they want $4,120. $4,100 they want for this no-name guitar. And I'm sure that guitar is going to sit there on the shelf for ages. Which as a lefty, uh, you know, I would have bought lefty guitars if they had them in stock at this place. But instead of stocking that, they stock all this no-name brand stuff that just sits on the wall for years and years and years. Sorry for a little rant there, but that's kind of how I feel about it. Okay, you say the Yamaha Pacifica. Of course, a lot of Yamaha uh, gear available in... Um, Japan. They have four Yamahas in this shop, all priced about the same $300, just in different colors. Of course, Yamaha is a very popular starting brand. Not the cheapo cheapo stuff, but it's a good quality beginner's guitar. Of course, we have some fenders on the wall. Little higher end fenders. I think one is a made in Mexico for uh, $1,200. Then we have a Fender American Standard for $2,300. Here's the most expensive fender in the shop. This is a team built um, custom shop, a relic, going for $5,500. That's the most expensive fender. Of course, the, the two Gibsons in the cases uh, are the most expensive guitars in the store as far as uh, electrics go. Here are all the bases on the wall. There's all the base wall here. And the first wall comes in this kind of mixes of bases and guitars. This is just all bases here. It's not as many, maybe a 50, I think, in total here. Now, this is kind of interesting, this guitar here. It says it's Bang Dream Viper Bass Rimmy. Now, what the heck do you think this is? Now, this is interesting. This is, as you know, Japanese love their cartoons, their animation cartoons. And this is an anime character's signature bass put out by ESP. There's a, a few guitar cartoons in 
anime cartoons in Japan, and one of them here, Bang Dream, not a really good name, but that's what it is. It's all about these girls, girl rock band, and they all play ESPs. And uh, actually, the the signature models for them can be quite expensive. This is maybe a little cheaper version of the bass player, but I've seen the proper ESPs for these going for three thousand, four thousand dollars. I'm not sure who would actually buy them, but if you if you like anime, maybe it'd be your thing. And this is something ESP has a kind of a little bit of funny things here. These are the two girls from Baby Metal, and this is a, the Baby Metal uh, Signature Series. And it's not just a guitar, it's a nine-string guitar. So this is their E2 Signature nine-string guitar. I don't think any of these young ladies can actually play this, this guitar, but they have their signature. It's got their Baby Metal Galaxy cover on it there. And you can have it for the small price of 3200 dollars for this guitar if you're a big baby metal fan it comes with its own signature case go to the japanese uh, esp page you can check it out online it's available to october so another kind of a funny signature you probably would not see generally in america but now as for guitars for there is a couple of signs here i thought i might introduce here so this is says um they have these um, beginner sets. So you, when you buy a guitar for $88, they'll give you a little mini amp, a tuner, a cloth, strings, a cord, everything you need. Plus they'll do a little um, small setup, we'll set the action for you and the intonation for $88 if you include for beginners guitar. So plus $88 for the setup. And of course this is the wall from a little distance away. And there's two signs there. One says, don't touch the guitars for any reason without help from the staff. Which might be a good idea because these guitars are kind of close together, right? You probably ding them if you're not careful about it, especially the ones in the back there. So you just can't take it off and start playing. you got to kind of call a staff over and they'll get a chord for you and they'll put you in a little soundproof room and you can play to your heart's content. There's, I've seen some stores where you have like open playing, you sit down, you play right there, but not this store. This store has, you have to go to a little soundproof room if you want to actually try the guitars out. Okay, as you can see, the, after the basses, we've got uh, three walls of acoustic guitars there. So it's about a hundred in total, there's about two or three acoustic uh, amps as well. There's a little corner here for Martins. Here's the Martin, one on the left here is for $3,600, one on the right is for almost $4,800, one of the most expensive guitars in there. Higher end Martins there. Some Taylors also going for a fairly good price, one's for $2,200, another's for $3,300. Yeah, there's a Gibson on the wall, also priced fairly expensive, $2,700 for that. And on the floor you got the cheapos, a lot of the Yamahas here going for about $400 or so each. And then there's a whole mishmash of various brands, some Epiphones and some brands that you probably never heard of there. Going for on the floor means it's relatively cheaper there. And of course, what would a guitar be start without their ukulele section? So here we have all the little ukuleles on the wall there. So with the ukuleles, I guess I'll end off my tour of a Japanese guitar store. If you get a chance, please check them out yourself. Of course, if you have any questions about it, uh, please leave a message in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. So take care and have a great day wherever you happen to be. Salut!